What is up, Horror Fiends? Welcome back to another episode of the Horror Junkies Podcast, the podcast that discusses all things horror. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and I'm joined with my ghoulish friends, Patrick and Dylan. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, hello. It's another episode. We're back. If you're our new listener, we appreciate you taking the time out of your weird day to come join our weird podcast. If you're a returning fiend, welcome back. We're going to provide you some sweet nothing, some news, and we're going to talk about possibly, maybe mine i don't know about dylan or patrick favorite movie of 2024 but i gotta wait until nosferatu comes out because i can't just go out making those proclamations and go back on my words but it's definitely going to be in the top three list and that is um caroline forgets the substance but before we get into all that fun stuff how you guys been Been i've been good yeah spooky season's finally over we had a spooktacular halloween episode had a lot of fun and now we're back to our plan so program long, it really did <laughs> well we were supposed to do this on wednesday and then i got stuck at work and it was just too fucking late so now here we are on a sunday you know sunday sunday sunday, sunday. we're in a Enter. we're in a fucking post mike tyson jake paul uh fisticuff fight we're in a post election a, world <laughs> yes the veil has been lifted yeah what shit's really... happened um what a boring fight. <laughs> yeah, what a boring fight. It was the, definitely scripted. The I'm women's the boxing was not the boring. The women's shit was no, fucking no, no. awesome. That woman was fucking robbed. The, yeah, she Serena was. Serena oh, was yeah, robbed. Yeah. Oh, she was. She Absolutely. was robbed apparently in the first round, the, the first match they did back in Madison Square Garden, and she was robbed again in this rematch. Oh, no. It's um, happening, Mike. <laughs> I, I don't know. I uh, no, no. We're becoming jocks. I know. <laughs> Dylan's influence is seeping into us after all these years. Oh, no. Good. Soon you'll have NFL mm. Red Zone subscriptions in no yes. time. <laughs> Execute Order sixty six. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, good. No, I mean it's been chill. I mean we've been hanging out, been you know working, watching movies. Um, I just went and saw Heretic last night, which is, a, if you don't know, A24's latest drop starring Hugh Grant, and Sophie Thatcher, and Carol uh, Chloe East. And it was, holy shit, that's a movie. So if you haven't watched that yet, you should make some time, some plans to definitely go check out Heretic uh, because it was not what I, what I was expecting. And I think it really changed what to expect from religious horror movies. Because it doesn't go down the whole possession route, which most of them do. Um, but have you guys watched anything good, D- Pat? Have, did 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 you watch something? I, not <laughs> good, uh, but I did watch something. Uh, I watched Jay Wall's movie Devin. Yeah. Was, your uh, your your opinion on this is going to be skewed because who's... you already hate found footage. But she didn't. Okay, so Sav didn't like it either. So really, yeah, <laughs> it's very much atmospheres there. The acting's a fucking atrocious. I will tell you that. There's one character named William who's a fucking golden. <laughs> the the thing that kept me going with this movie. Mm-hmm. He was like a gay black guy in the movie. He's like the comic relief. He was fucking hilarious. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it was literally just a typical found hey, footage. Found ghost footage. Movie. We're doing this. We're investigating this missing child's thing to make money, and then they're stuck in a fucking you know an asylum and there's a time warping and it, no. it's mostly just them shaky cam screaming each other's names that's pretty so much kind all of that like goga john i'm uh, goga john goga g haunted mansion yeah but at least in that movie we got some like, cool asylum. scares and Devin, there's like scares but you can barely see anything what movie is this Devin. this is Devin. So it's Jay Wow from the Jersey Shore. Oh, I, that's what I thought you said. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sitting here yeah, so yeah, confused. Yeah, yeah. Like, did he, this motherfucker just say Jay Wow? Yeah, dude. So apparently, Jay Wow is like a huge horror fiend. Loves I knew that was my movies. bitch. I yeah. knew uh, but it, 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 it <laughs> Jay Wow's like, the realist. I haven't watched it yet. I have it. It's in our inbox to watch, but it's also streaming now to rent. Uh, but it sounds a lot like Gojiam Haunted Asylum, which we've done an episode yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, you know what I would prefer? What a haunted house in the in, on the shore? Get a bunch of here, and do you do know it, where but... they filmed that movie though? <laughs> where that they filmed that movie in the Penhurst Asylum in Philadelphia, which is an actual standing mental asylum that horrible things have happened as with Didn't every institution in this... that house or that place. Huh? 
Didn't uh, Ghost Adventures? I'm sure a lot. If Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, pretty. If much it's haunted, people. Zach Baggins has been there. <laughs> Zach That's Baggins true. has made his mark on it. Um, so much so that I want us to go to it because they have paranormal tours that you can go to. So I think next year, pack up, get ready for a little adventure, boys. The junkies are going ghost hunting. Yeah. So, and that sounds exciting. But you know what, my. Um... <laughs> I gotta tell you, uh, the internet has ruined paranormal t- television in a bad way. Oh, has yeah. ruined paranormal like content for me at all. I can't believe it. I can't believe any of it. And Zach Baggins doesn't help either. No, he's definitely the worst. And I think that is an insecure be- man yelling at the walls. <laughs> you like these tattoos? <laughs> yeah. He, he he I've 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 gone over this before. Zach Baggins is a uh he's an emotionally stunted uh individual who just yeah. makes things up. And and like oh, yeah. Sam and Colby, which my girlfriend has uh, makes me watch sometimes and it's just what was that? Oh my god, it's getting colder in here. Is it, dude? Yeah. So is well, it is that. like yeah. yeah, they definitely have to like build hype and I, I and that's what I hate about it too, right? You can obviously tell when they're trying to like in like add things in for like a- actual fear factor but not really real or anything it's just to like garner more viewership and continue to the yeah. viewer to like stay on top of it there is one channel that i do like to watch she's like an irish chick um and she usually like brings like some people on with her and they did one house that was pretty insane like it it um it was just the four of them in this house and like they would be filming something and like all of a sudden like shit would like something would go flying off the wall like, they were in like it was like they had it on camera so you weren't and they were all in frame so it wasn't like a stage type of thing yeah. but i don't disagree with you the, it's just like with found footage when i was talking to um car uh, carmine uh, carmelo excuse me um the director of name the demon like the entry to barrier is so low so therefore there are so many yeah, um, yeah. It, so with when that happens it's oversaturated and sometimes unfortunately the the substance and the quality isn't there uh but you're not wrong i miss the old i love watching the old ghost of it yeah you had before to yeah, they yeah. got huge well back yeah back then you had to have like some credentials yeah to like get get to get like mass public like public viewership and now it's just any jackass with like a thermometer <laughs> and a flashlight. Yeah, I mean, you, you look <laughs> just at goes out, just Buzz walks feet. around with a rectal thermometer, like oh, yeah. <laughs> spirits. It's a spirit no, box. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, I think the best ones that are kind of like my favorite still to watch today are, are Ryan and Shane from BuzzFeed, but they're now called yeah. the Watchers. Yeah, and I think they're fucking hilarious. Yeah, they're great because uh, Ryan is so scared, and he because he's the believer, but Shane is the skeptic, and it's just. The interactions between them two are the hilarious. Those are the and fun like, ones, like the fun dynamic ones that I like. Yeah, he's like, I used to watch... Shane's always like, "What's up, demons? It's yeah. your boys." <laughs> yeah, no, I used and... to watch uh, before I got into Ghost Adventures. I used to watch Ghost Hunters on Sci Fi, and they just came back of the reboot. I think like two years ago on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. and it was boring. <laughs> of was course, like, it was. Yeah. yeah, my favorite depiction of Ghost Hunters is from Supernatural. Have y'all? Like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, Pat. Yeah. I actually do not. <laughs> yes. What really are they called? I show. can't remember what they're called. Uh... <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna have to look it up. Y'all are gonna have to talk. Yeah. About you know so about much. it? Hit us up in the chat. But we don't. <laughs> I don't know enough about, enough about Supernatural. Because... Oh my God, Mike, you need to watch that show. Do I? Yeah. Do no, I? You, you would. You would love it. It's surprise. Like it's so, some right. episodes are surprisingly scary. Okay, I'll check it out. If it's not as good as Vampire Diaries, I'm not fucking doing it. They're called Ghost Facers. Ghost Facers. Ghost Facers. Yeah, we're the Ghost Facers. Facers. And it's like they periodically show up like every season, like once or twice maybe. But it's like the Sam and Dean will roll up to some some like thing to go solve stuff and they'll be like ahead of them. Like, yeah, it's like a getting in the way and like stuff like that. And so it's it's very I do love that aspect of it. But yeah, Mike, oh, man. Like I'll me. check it out. I'll get right now. I'm finishing. I'm almost done watching the wire. That's the ne- latest yes, thing I'm watching. Oh, I've never yeah. Watched it. So I'm almost done with the wire. I think I'm on se- the end of season four, almost season Oof. five. So I'm right there at the cusp. Um, and then I'll, I'll jump in. I'll maybe I'll, I'll convince the wire. Have you so. finished penguin yet? No, that's another one I got to finish. Oh, I was watching it, but then man. I know I knew East Issa was out for a week for work. And that's when I started watching. I was like, I'm on two episodes in. I need to stop because she's going to want to watch this. Yeah. And I'd rather be able just to watch rewatch two episodes versus like the entire fucking thing. 
So I'm going to restart that. And I was just talking to Pat. Um, I'm going, I don't have to, I'm, I'm off tomorrow. So I'm going to go into the city and hang out and I'm going to hit up some comic book shops because if you didn't know, and you're a fan of the Batman with Robert Pattinson, Pond, uh, Paul Dano, the guy who plays the Riddler, if I'm not mistaken, that that's the correct name. I think it is. I'm just Paul Dano, you're right. All right. He actually wrote a comic book series that is the Riddler Year Zero, which is his own um, um, like coming of story um, background. God, what am I thinking? Why can't I? Why am I lacking on the phrase, Pat? Uh, or comic book origin story thank you it's his hits his character the riddler's origin story it's a six issue uh run and it's written in by paul dano and the you know whoever illustrated the book and it which looks is cool because it's kind of like getting inside of like maybe his notes of like how he developed this character for the mm -hmm. movie because of course like when you're an actor and you're playing like such an iconic role such as the riddler yeah you kind of like have to have your own like you know, version of what you think the Riddler is and come up with your own concept. And it's cool that he's yeah. kind of like sharing this with the public by yeah. comic book form. I, I cannot, I hope some, some of the stores I'm going to have it because I at least want to get the first couple of issues, if not all six. Yeah. No. And this is yeah, a trade back. Riddler... I'll do a trade back, but I'm, I'm usually an issue kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, But speaking of Jay, well, I know we kind of like, <laughs> we've kind of reared and went and we talked about things. The reason I bring it up is because Pat, you shared a fucking bloody disgusting article. I did. And, do you want to talk about it? So they actually they, they caught actual ghosts in the final cut of this movie. It all make it all connects back to the fucking web. We're we're yeah. fucking slinging honey buns over here, but Which, we kind of we're we're sticky when we come back. Don't and worry. And every time I see these type of shits, I'm like, hmm. gimmicky, gimmicky. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a gimmick. But but <laughs> I don't know, man. So uh, I'll I post it in our show notes <laughs> because you want it to be. But she, the editor, who's also an actor, posted an Instagram video showing the actual, like, on the editing's table of the movie where there was images of ghosts. Yeah. And if you watch the movie, you don't get a clear look at, at any of the ghosts that they show in this movie. So it could be it could be a gimmick or it could be could true. Be. This is a real haunted place. So well, let me and ask y'all something. Just like what they say in the X-Files, I do want to believe. Yeah, exactly. Well, let me ask y'all something. Let's well, just say it well, is ghosts. Well, ask in your head first before you say it out loud. No, I'm going to ask. <laughs> um, no. Um, if ghosts are right. real, let's just say that movie, let's just say whatever they had turns out to be true. Mm -hmm. What then? What happens after that? What do you mean? We you find out that ghosts are real. Before we, before we get definitive proof that aliens are real, even though they're real. Hold they on, are. You, but go, we've got definitive evidence that ghosts are real. But I mean, like irrefutable evidence. I my ir, your irrefutable ref, uh, evidence is that we are all created of matter, and matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So there, or energy, excuse me, cannot be created nor in or destroyed. So therefore, when you die, energy is transferred into the environment, which is then how people experience paranormal phenomena. All right, Carl. Sagan, that's just... not what I asked. What 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 no, I like, asked seriously. is like if everybody just just everybody just like found out and was like, oh yeah, there's the ghosts are for real. Everybody had to believe it. Like, what do you think would happen? Like, do you think there would any be any like societal ramifications of like no. everybody knowing that there's ghosts now? Because you know, there's a, for as many people believe, there's as many that don't. Don't believe. No, I don't think so. No, I mean, but it should be like I'll kinda, start. Okay, cool. Does that change religion? Does that change? No, because religion would always try to find a way to make up some excuse to why. Oh, oh it's planned. always been like that. <laughs> Those are well, angels, It would make baby. sense of the local crackheads I see that talk to the fucking wind. I'm like, oh, they're talking to ghosts. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, like all ghosts are typically are and why everything that's measured when it comes to like paranormal investigators is based on like energy levels in the environment and sudden shifts of temperatures because energy can do all that kind of stuff. So like that to me, that's my that's my foundational belief. I don't believe in an afterlife, but I do believe that because we are made up of energy and it can't be destroyed, it has to be transferred to other things. That is why you have these weird instances of like, say, you know, voc voice coming through or shadows. It, Listen, dude. I believe in ghosts. I've had then, prayer, I've had go interactions and weird things happen to me in my life enough to enough evidence things that happened to me personally for me to build a foundational belief that something is going amiss more so than uh, there's a big man in the sky which is wild to say that i 
because in the, in words, words of fire and ice, suck it, nerd. <laughs> I've been told to never believe what I can't see, but if I can feel goosebumps or get a pressure point or hear something that is more futable evidence that something exists that I can't describe. And I don't, it's cool. I'm cool with not knowing why and what happens, but at least I can feel that versus like, you know, whatever All right, else. Is going on. All right, Mike, show me on the doll where the ghost touched you. <laughs> like, what happened to you? If anyone wants to know, yes, I did smoke weed before the show. So. I, <laughs> that's why I'm not. like, Hey guys. So, uh, <laughs> so how about ghouls and speaking yeah. about aliens in the ocean? Mike, Mike has the same enthusiasm for ghosts as he does dinosaurs. Do with that what you will. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> I am an he active be- he ghost actually, consumer. It's a mixture of both. He believes in d- ghost dinosaurs. <laughs> Listen, show him a show him a ghost dinosaur. This, watch this man explode. All right, I would yeah, literally from the head exploding scene, and that 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 would be me. <laughs> <Just fucking. laughs> And there he goes, everyone. He transcended into what he loved the most, a dinosaur, dinosaur. ghost. Dinosaur. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we'll post that shit in our show notes if you haven't seen already. It's kind of a cool thing. Uh, yeah. But what's another? I mean, there's been a There hasn't speaking been a ghosts, lot that's been. <laughs> speaking, speaking of ghosts of and ghosts, dead things. Um, <laughs> holy fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> we lost an icon. We did. During our uh, not doing podcast week. No. Yeah. We did. Uh, uh, Tony Todd. Tony Todd, everybody. Rest in peace, people. No, God, please, no, no. (laughs) An air horn salute. (laughs) Yeah, twenty-one air horn salute (laughs) for for our homie Tony. We're gonna fucking. We're gonna. We're gonna rip a honey bun. We're gonna drop it on the ground for our dude Tony Todd. (laughs) R.I.P. A fucking legend. You know, honey bees. Honey bees. Candy man. People can't say we're not fucking good at this. Do you see how this connections, the segues, everything has been fun, and none of this is planned. No. This is all just live off we're, the dome. We're doing this raw. We, we're, <laughs> we're doing this raw. Yeah, no, I was shocked that he died because he was just in stream. Yeah. He just voice acted for Venom. Yeah. Which I and haven't I was seen just yet. Like, what? Me either. But Jesus, dude, what yeah. the fuck happened? I mean, did and you see what he lo- was what... looking like, though? He was he was looking. He did look pretty manson Pretty rough. Yeah. So I wonder if it was some type of terminal illness, maybe. Maybe. Something. I don't know. They haven't really, I don't think they've really been forthcoming with like what caused his death yet. Yeah. Um, But it but... was definitely shocking to the community because a lot. Of, the thing is, like, Tony Todd did something that not a lot of horror icons have done. Well, this man was a candy man for what roughly 16 minutes worth of screen time in the first movie yeah in the first movie and completely captivated an audience like his well, character was just so cool and iconic and his acting skills yeah were, ugh. dude he fucking put bees in his mouth he like literally legit <laughs> like this man was not fucking around he was about it. that he was a very poetic like uh, tragic like figure he wasn't just like mm-hmm. a you know a child killer or like a fucking like a yeah, murder yeah. or anything like that he was kind of you were kind of on his side on things you're like mm-hmm. yeah yeah dude we get it Generational no, trauma. Died, I, fucking, I ran oh. straight to the bathroom and did the Candyman chant. <laughs> yeah, no, everyone. <laughs> like Colby, like, when Colby uh, texted me and told me about it, I'm like, all right, man, we got to go see Candyman's name five times in yeah. the mirror. We got to bring him back somehow. We got to keep him alive. But uh, with that being said, it's been a while since he's passed. I think it was like a week, over a week now. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are, you know, shaking up in the horror community. Um, honor his fucking legend. Go watch all of his movies, not just his horror film. The man is a phenomenal actor and has been in some wild movies and TV shows. So, R.I.P. Tony Todd. Another one's done. Who's next? We're taking bets. Twenty one. Well, well, the next person to die will get a real twenty one air horn salute by our own Patrick. Um, anything else, Pat? Um, Alfred Hitchcock. The documentary is coming out. I'm excited for this because I'm a Hitchcock. Guy. Yeah, that's that's your dude right there. I like Hitchcock films. I like his, the man's an icon, a legend. No. Is it just coming to D- VOD or is it hitting theaters it's by in, chance? No, it's in uh, Blu-ray and DVD and stuff Blu-ray like that. DVD. I uh, wonder, IFC December has a whole documentary, um, like cool. festival that they do, and I'm one. I wonder if they're going to showcase it there. Probably, because um, that'd be interesting to see. I can't, I'm, I'll, I'll, I don't know if I'm going to buy it right off the bat, but I'll definitely, I'll def- definitely give it a rent. Yeah, no, we'll we'll do a review on it, and we'll probably do like a whole 
Hitchcock theme. We haven't really done a Hitchcock series. Mm, I don't even think we've done Psycho. <laughs> we, I don't, we haven't done Psycho. We haven't done... Um, Birds is not a Hitchcock movie. Is it? What? Birds is definitely a Hitchcock yeah, movie. Birds is yeah. A, yeah, yeah. Vertigo. Vertigo. Rear Window. Rear Window. So we definitely got to do um, a Hitchcock fucking... Well, I would love to do Psycho 1 and 2 back to back. Those, oh yeah, we gotta good, because no Ver- one talks about how good Psycho yeah. Two actually is. I've never seen Psycho Two, and I just found out the other day my shorty has never seen the original Psycho. Yeah. Oh wow! Even no, though she- when she moved in, she had like a, she had a collection of like Alfred Hitchcock DVDs, in and, they're, and they're in my mantle, and she's like, "What's that?" Like we were, <laughs> it was on it was on Netflix, and we were scanning through, and there it was, and she just goes, "The birds, what's that?" <laughs> like. Doom scrolling, like looking at me, like the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> and I'm like, you have the DVD. She goes, I do. <laughs> okay. You should have <laughs> looked like, dead in the face and be like, do you want to be traumatized? The birds. Oh my god. Then I have a movie for you. <laughs> the birds. Well, yeah. No. There's a really funny John Mulaney SNL sketch about the birds that if you haven't yeah. seen it, just look that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look it up if you've never seen it. It's very funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's sick. So definitely, we'll re- we'll get that when it comes out. We'll talk about that and you know do a whole Hitchcock series. Maybe maybe we'll do a week weekly yeah, episode. And we could do we'll the do Hitchcock movies. There's a movie where um, what's his face? Um, Leatherface, not Leatherface. Uh, sorry, Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, yeah uh, actor. Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins. <laughs> play, there's a movie. Uh, it's like a biopic of Alfred Hitchcock, and he plays Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, basically. I've seen Such it. Such a good movie. It's really I've good. I've actually not seen that movie, yeah. and I like religiously watch almost everything that I think he was uh, nominated for it. For does. yeah, yeah, he played a really good Hitchcock. Um, he played a good cock. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of news that's kind of related to this movie that I have for you guys. So, two things about this movie: one, um, this movie has been submitted to the Golden Globes in the format of a music comedy. Um, which is just absolutely fucking hilarious. If you got to give it something, sure. But it, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, comedy musical is the category that the substance will be uh, presented in. Yeah, uh, in the Golden know. Globes. I cannot wait for this movie to win yeah. that uh, that fucking honor. Um, I honestly really hope that this movie does get submitted to the Oscars because I think it should. Uh, maybe not um, for. It probably will never win Best Picture. But uh, maybe for best original screenplay, something like down the ladder type of, of tiers. Fuck that um, best actor, <laughs> dude. For actress, I I don't disagree because Demi Moore fucking kills it, and so does Margaret Qualley for that yeah. matter. Um, like, second thing, the second thing about this movie is Caroline Fragit just pulled this movie from a fucking film festival because she found out and caught wind that the guy who runs it was spewing all of this misogynistic fucking shit and she pulled her movie from the entire fucking uh festival she's like you're not going to play this movie spewing this kind of language it's antithetical to what this movie represents and what this well, movie means she, and what i put into this movie so, so she fucked she, yourself she chapel ruined it she yeah. really did <laughs> and i fucking love that yeah she said that's it i'm out of here she was hot to go and she's she like absolutely. pull my fucking movie and this movie made so much fucking money yeah <laughs> like god damn um, but is there any other news before we jump into, or is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we get into the actual episode? I got um, nothing, but... I'm throwing something out there real quick. Oh, hell yeah. Um, and no, it's not news or anything. It's just personal. Um, but I am going to, uh, uh, you guys don't know anything about it. I haven't really talked about it much, but my, uh, my mom's best friend, she's had a best friend since she was middle school, uh, back, back in the day. Um, she recently passed away. Oh. Uh, all of a sudden out of nowhere it was very tragic um but she, uh her name was shelly and shelly was an avid stephen king reader she mm. has read every stephen king book he's ever written probably three to four or five times over jesus um she's a big big reason as to why i'm as into stephen king as i am or as i am into certain types of horror media um the dark tower for sure mm-hmm. uh i believe she got my brother 
a copy of that for Christmas or I his feel birthday like one time. About her on the show before. Yeah, uh, we, we, we called her Aunt Shelley. Like she would come with us to Halloween Horror Nights and stuff, and she was just like you know, she was great, great, great. But no, she did suddenly pass away. It was very sad. There's going to be a, uh, a remembrance of life thing for her on Wednesday, so I'll be going to that with my family and everything. But uh, yeah, R.I.P. Shelley Power, a real one, a an real absolute, one. an absolute real one. Yeah. Um, and and, Give her a and, salute. and for uh, formidable. Yeah, yeah, there it is. The <laughs> she definitely deserves twenty one air horns, but uh, <laughs> a little extra on top. But yeah, yeah, no, I just wanted to pay my respects real quick. Yeah, definitely. You know? Hell yeah, so uh, yeah, she's being memorialized in the horror junkies eco sphere. There you go. No better way to be memorialized, in my opinion. That's right. Um, Pat, you said you had something else. Hell no. Let's get. Oh, it. Let's okay. get to- <laughs> oh God, I'm fucking done. Hell fucking no. Um, cool. So with that being said, we're gonna, as always, guys. When you're listening to the show, we're gonna give our general conversation, you know, thoughts and opinions about the movie, and then we'll kind of go into a more spoiler. So if you have not watched the substance, um, stop this episode if you want to. We're not, you know, you can do whatever the fuck you want, but it is streaming on Mubi. And that's M U B I. So you can actually go get a seven day trial and watch this movie for free. So just FYI, um, if you want to give them movie, then pay the rental price, dude. It's movie deserves it. But, but with that being said, we are, we're preparing to go into an absolutely fucking insane movie. Substance. Have you ever dreamt of a better version of yourself? Yes. Younger. Yes. More beautiful. Yes. More perfect. Mm-hmm. One single injection unlocks your DNA, starting a new cellular division that will release another version of yourself. This is the substance. Dude, what a fucking badass ad. So, <laughs> before we go into anything, I was there. Mike was there. <laughs> when we first saw a trailer for this movie during yep. Cuckoo. Because this movie was under our radar. And we we saw a trailer for during before Cuckoo. And we were like, what the fuck is this? What did we just watch? <laughs> what the fuck? And right then and there, Mike knew. He's like, this is probably going to be my favorite movie this year. And yep. here we are. <laughs> here we fucking are. I cannot begin to tell you how much i absolutely love this movie um i have not stopped thinking about it i have not stopped recommending it to people um it it, it's just i don't know what it is about this movie that really just checks a lot of fucking boxes to for this like i was hyped for long legs uh but this movie every time i talk about it, i get goosebumps and i don't know why um and it's not even just because of how disturbingly fucked up and gross it is. It's because also, inside Mike, there's a be- there's a pretty girl. <laughs> Who's the beautiful girl? <laughs> um, and just for you guys to know, the substance is directed by Caroline Fargeet, who also directed Revenge. Yeah, um, so if you have not that watched movie? that, watch that movie because it's yes. also fucking awesome. She is a phenomenal director, a great writer. In the substance, as our man just said. Um, is a way for you to obtain a better version of yourself. So just a the literally the tag the um synopsis for this movie or the is a fading celebr- celebrity takes a black market drug, a cell replicating substance that temporarily creates a younger, better version of herself. And this movie has such a stacked cast. And I think that was one of the first things we noticed when we were watching the trailer, Pat. We're like, first off, Demi Moore, the yeah. fuck? Margaret <laughs> I re- Qualley? I remember. What? Like, what? And then all of a sudden, Dennis Quaid, and we're like, what is this cast, man? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Um, But I will save my thoughts. I would love you guys to go first, and then I will go last. You can go, Dylan. Go ahead. Dylan. No, Pat, no. <laughs> <laughs> we had to force everyone, just so you're listening, we had to force Dylan. We, <laughs> one of us may or may not have went to his house and pointed a gun at him i'm kidding but we really did force dylan to watch a movie all while knowing that he was absolutely going to fucking hate it and with that being said i guess i could i guess i could go from there i guess i could go (laughs) from there you have to know because if uh if uh if everything mike has said has been awesome well 
Cool your jets because Uncle Dylan's <laughs> come around to fucking piss on the parade. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. We we we. We'll, every time he talks talking shit, we'll just block him out. Oh uh, yes. Uh, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> what is this fucking X? <laughs> Go ahead, Elon. Fucking. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to go about this as delicately as possible. So the fucking nerds don't get mad when I say what I'm going to say. Let me pad the landing a little bit, okay? Patty with a I understand that for who this stuff is made for, it's incredible. Yeah. I understand that Dennis Quaid was probably one of my top... Dennis Quaid performances ever. He was truly a vile piece of shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Demi Moore was fucking awesome. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Um, the visuals, incredible. I would like to know what the budget is. Because if, if it was a small budget, they, they've they stretched a small budget better than any other movie I've seen. $17.5 million. S- yeah, relatively right. small. Relatively That's pretty small. small in movie making. World. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I imagine a lot of that maybe went to Demi Moore Demi and Moore. Yeah. yeah, just Demi you know getting played. some names attached to it because that does help. Um, everybody that I've known, don't know, or just people I've seen who've expressed their opinions about this movie have all loved it. They have all loved it. Fucking Katy Perry tweeted that it was the best movie of the year. It's wild, dude. Like it's wild. got. It's gotten a lot of attention. I didn't realize this many people liked body horror, and I think that that's a problem. No, it's not. <laughs> Welcome to the I, fucking I, 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 I think that's like open. yeah, no, because I because uh, because now that I've said what I've said in my acknowledgments of the movie, that it is technically yes a well done, very very well done movie, and a very you. very well acted movie. I appreciate now. you saying all of that. <laughs> But, now, <laughs> time to shed out a titty. Let's go. <laughs> is this a Dylan movie? No, <laughs> absolutely not, not. No, we know that. <laughs> I was physically exhausted after watching this movie. <laughs> I had my I had my fist balled up like Arthur at at just just imagining fucking Pat and Mike holding hands and like skipping in a circle. <laughs> About making me watch this movie, like ha ha ha, 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 ha. Dylan's gonna watch the movie, and I watched the movie, and uh, yeah, by the way, I had to subscribe to movie. I mean, hey, it takes two seconds on Prime Video to subscribe to something. But that's the thing; it's like I go to look at all the other movies it has, and it's like you remember in Tropic Thunder where uh, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. he won the Crying Monkey Award. Yes. <laughs> All of the movies on movie look like they have won or were nominated for the Crying Monkey Award. Listen, this was a huge win for movie, Mubi. Um, but yes, it's a weird platform. But thankfully, you didn't have to like pay for a subscription. Like l- at least they're giving us. Seven- they know. They know their shit. They're like, we got this one good movie. We better give everyone free seven day access with the full intention of knowing that everyone will be canceling that within the seven days. <laughs> Yeah, it's a sub and immediate cancel for me. I didn't. I didn't yeah, pay, no, I, I still need twice for it. So yeah. <laughs> I still need to cancel that subscription because there ain't no way. No, there's no, really no, anything on there that that tickles my fancy. Not that I don't appreciate a good, you know, art house ish film every now and then. Body horror is not and will never be <laughs> for me. With that being a, said, a, ladies a and little gentlemen, bit. what do you want Dylan to watch next? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of body horror is fine, like gore and blood and guts and stuff. I'm fine with it. Dennis Quaid eating that shrimp. Oh, whoa, 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 brother! <laughs> we, we won't get there, but I will just say that plus other things. For me, I, it was a torturous experience. I remember texting Mike and Pat. I was mad. <laughs> I know. You said you were going to watch the rest of it. And I was like, I no, I, and I like, stood it out. out I, I stood God. it out. I stood it out. But I will say this, and I do, and I stand by it. The next time y'all want to do a movie like this, I'm going to sit on the couch and play Dragon Age, and y'all can fucking talk about it. Because I, I, I will say this. I will, re, re, I will rebuttal with this. When you signed that contract. <laughs> what in contract? The, in the <laughs> fine, <laughs> fine print. It said. Dylan will watch body horror 
if and when Patrick and Mike. No, I'm just kidding. I was about to say, uh, yeah, I didn't sign shit. Watch something you don't want to watch. I just felt like this, like, there are body horror movies that are made to be extremely fucked up and gross, and that is it. Then there is this, while it has that disgusting element, it has such a great story attached to it. It helps, enhances it, and makes up for it. So if you're not really into body horror, it is a rough watch. And I think that that's, it's a rough watch for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into. Um, but if body horror is not your thing, then this movie is going to be a tough one. Well, there's, well, there's... It is all types of body horror. It's not just right. skin but... being gashed and clawed and ripped. It's there's food body horror elements. That's what I hate. I and there's hate other things food body are, horror. Yeah. So it's it's a rough one. But there, even but, my wife hasn't watched this movie yet because she's like, listen, I have to be like mentally prepared to watch this because she hasn't watched anything. She just knows from the little sprinkles I've been throwing at her just how fucking and like she knows how much you hate body horror and how much of a pain at the time you had watching this that she's like. I'm not watching this until I feel like I can handle what the fuck I'm about to watch. She never, she never needs to see it. She never needs you to see it. You say that, but I say it, she does. If you don't of, like it's watching like a, a phenomenal movie. I told my brother. And I'll my brother, body horror. I told my brother about it, and he's a listener of the show, and I said, yeah, this is probably Mike's favorite movie of the year. And he we'll goes, see. over long legs? And I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> Listen, it's not that long legs isn't a great movie no but like yeah. and i love it because i love you guys know that i love crime dramas and crime thrillers that those are i love them to death i'm just saying in top three respectively right now is probably or top five even will probably not be nosferatu depending on how that movie is which i've heard amazing, amazing things, things already yep. um substance long legs heretic and cuckoo um those are like my top five i just don't know where they're gonna go in order yet yeah right. um no i'm still having a difficult it's, time making my top five i i did a top 20 today on our letterbox like i made a list that's like mike's top 20 yeah um and i was trying to organize them impossible yeah there has been so many good i, I just made a video about this the other day how we're living in a horror renaissance yeah like sure, the bro. age of horror that we're living in this year is unreal you yeah, know why? Uh, there's not been any fucking Blumhouse and Marvel movies come out this year. No, we've had a bunch of Blumhouse movies come out this year. No, They've at all the beginning sucked. of the, at the beginning of the we year. Had, we, had a, yeah. we had the the pool movie. We had the Imaginary. They had uh, Afraid, House of Spoils, Afraid. I forgot about every fucking single Afraid. fucking Blumhouse movie that's been released this year has sucked. Yeah. yeah, because they get thrown out, they make whatever they can, and they get scrapped. Yeah. And then, like, um, they just go, they just fade into obscurity. It's but I just, didn't want to cut you off anymore, Dylan. So, I, any other thoughts? Or you were talking about your brother and how well, this was my favorite, going to be my favorite movie. Yeah. Oh, and it, it just, the thing is, and that's what makes, I think, in this podcast pretty powerful is that uh, we all don't just sit here like chimps and clap our hands at the same yeah. thing. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, 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 my God, we love, we all love it. Five stars, five stars. No. Yeah. We're not like that. Like, if, if I think a movie, is again i had to separate myself from the movie itself and how i yeah. view body horror because it's not fair just because i don't like body horror doesn't mean that the movie itself doesn't have talent yeah. weaved in and out of it completely because it does yeah. oh, and, and i'm so glad i was so scared and i was like he's gonna hate this and i knew you were gonna hate it like i knew that's i'll never okay watch it again never... i'll never watch it again in my life <laughs> I was like, I knew, I was like, either he's going to watch it or he respectfully says, hey, guys, this isn't for me. I'm not going to watch this, which is cool. Yeah. We're never going to force no. anyone on our show to watch something that they're not going to enjoy. But I just felt like because this movie is We're done joking. so We're fucking well that it's it's yeah. it demands the watch. You say you won't force anyone to watch a movie you don't want to watch. <laughs> and yet Listen. here we are doing a movie on a review on a movie you've all forced me to watch. No. Hey. Do you do it? For may the bits. or may not have <laughs> fair. The allegations stand. <laughs> um, well, uh, well, and I, I'll get into it later yeah, when we get into yeah. a certain scene about a, a bit, another reason that <laughs> I can only imagine that, that I that uh, well it it, it just it, it we'll get to it yeah, yeah we'll get to it yeah. Um, so I seen it twice, yeah, first time in theaters with Dom and Lauren, my good friends. They loved it, and then I watched it at home with Sav, and here's her reaction throughout the whole movie. <laughs> I know. 
I almost want to put it on t-shirts. Yeah. It's just so fucking... The horror on her face so, is so palatable. <laughs> this movie did... Second second uh, watch did something I haven't had since like I was a kid. But you know when you rewatch a movie, you're just like, man, I hope it... I hope it turns out well for the main character i hope nothing bad happens. even though you know like you know the plot you know, you know. what's gonna happen like the whole time like just just pay respects to the rules <laughs> just, just, just please just obey the rules damn it and then you know and i haven't had that feeling in a while since fucking the second time or like third time i saw it, uh never ending story and i'm like please don't let the horse go through the fucking depression <laughs> <laughs> please don't kill the horse maybe <laughs> this time he'll learn die. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, but um, I mean, I love this movie. Clearly, I saw yeah. it twice. Uh, I think because, and, and you know, because I'm a fucking body horror guy. I love body horror, but I also yeah. love my body horrors with a little bit of message and a little bit of uh, substance in it, and no pun intended. <laughs> ah, I agree. I agree. Usually, I, I body horror flicks are typically something that. I enjoy and I love and you know yeah. you think of the greats the fly the thing American Werewolf in London um you My know they're all very impactful ginger snaps ginger snaps even trick or treat has or treat. Some yeah. I mean amazing body horror American movies. Werewolf in London is one of my favorite horror movies right I love that movie yeah. I, own that I own it on 4K yeah. I mean like that's but that's uh, that kind of like body transformation horror like into a werewolf like yeah. that I'm into yeah. that yeah, I'm into yeah, the no, that's, practical that's effects of it. Yeah, yeah, that that's about as far as I want to take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and again, I'm on the same boat too. Like most of my favorite, my favorite creatures of all times, always going to be werewolves. I think the and the body transformation, especially in film, is so iconic, and that's why, like for me, it's like I do consider like American Wolf in, in London and Ginger Snaps and or movies like that into the category of body yeah. horror. So oh, yeah. Especially Ginger Snaps, because again, it has. Not just like a werewolf movie, but it is about it, it has subtext about things, you know? It's yeah. kinda cool. And this movie yeah. does too. That's what right. I like about this. This movie has subtext and then it's just blatant yeah. <laughs> um with this message. And so you have anything else or is that's my it, turn? that's all all right. So for me, like yes, it's no shame if you're listening to the show, Pat and I are big into body horror. We love them. Some of our favorite movies are some of the most grossest, <laughs> fucked up things you can watch. Um for me it was just I knew I was going to love this movie from the opening credit scene. The decision to have a like a baby powder blue background with an egg on a plate. And then you see the needle come in and inject the this green substance into the yolk. And all of a sudden you see this cellular mitosis begin to happen and it does such a phenomenal job with no dialogue, with no sound to foreshadow everything that's going to happen in the movie. Mm -hmm. And I just, I appreciate that she took like the direction that this director took on so many levels, right? Because it's not just a body horror movie. It's a movie about women, societal standards of beauty that are unobtainable, ageism, you know, how women are viewed at, at a certain age and so many other com complex things that happen in our society today. And it was just so, and, and then like through the journey through the film, mind you, I'm eating while I'm watching this movie because I had chicken tenders and, and fries and I was just fucking going at it. I had so many reactions in this movie. There was reactions of joy, laughter, concern, shock, like I was like, Whoa. there were parts of this movie I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? Like how how was this put in in major studios? Like how is this not a straight to VOD? You know what I mean? Like and this is this is this is not the kind of movie that you see just plastered on AMC and Regals and all the other in Cinemarks. Like, this is not the kind of movie that you you see hit mainstream theaters like that have wild showings like the. This movie was sold out at, at all of the Alamo Draft House in New York City for it sounds multiple about days. Right. And I just, I mean, every stage of this movie, there I can't find a fault. And we'll talk about that later on when we kind of dig into the story a little bit more. Yeah. But I've watched this movie once, twice, three times. 
And every time I found myself just excited and enjoying it to a level like that I can't, I haven't felt in a long time with watching a movie. Um, and okay. I love a lot of movies that we watch and I love a lot of the movies that we get sent via screeners and they're fun and they're awesome and I'll always promote them. But like this just did something that I think that I was not expecting, especially for the horror world with such a stacked cast that you would never truly see do movies like this. And it's interesting that they they signed on to this program and a fun fact, Dennis Quaid wasn't the original, excuse me, actor for that role. It was Roy Loetta. Ray Liotta, <laughs> but he died. Ray Liotta, excuse me, yeah, yeah. Did, but then he died. So Dennis Quaid took up the mantle. But and even you can then, totally like, see did, Ray Liotta yeah. playing that that type of role anyway. God, he yeah. would have been a fucking master. But but Dennis Quaid kills it. Yeah, he does. Um, he does. So with that being said, let's get into the substance. Let's let's fucking get our activator on. And I'm just gonna briefly read a little bit of the synopsis here, just to set up the film for us all. Yeah. <clears throat> so. On her 50th birthday, Elizabeth Sparkle, who is played by Demi Moore, a once celebrity uh, ce- celebrated but now faded Hollywood movie star, is abruptly dismissed from her long-running aerobatics TV show by the producer Harvey, played by Dennis Quaid, due to her age. Distraught, Elizabeth crashes her car while distracted by a billboard of herself being taken down. At the hospital, a young nurse uh, covertly gives her a flash drive advertising the substance. A black market serum that possesses a younger, more beautiful, more perfect version of, of oneself. And then can someone play the spoiler alarm so that we fucking people know that night, from this point on, spoilers are going to be talked about in this movie? We got it. You have to say spoiler alert, dude. You can't just do that. <laughs> you can't just do that. This movie is fucking insane. <laughs> Dylan, what was one of your favorite parts of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Oh what? boy, just one. <laughs> just one? The <laughs> um, end credits? <laughs> I mean, I loved the whole I loved the whole like Demi Moore contemplation of like the like getting the substance to begin with. Like yeah. she gets the she gets the uh the flash drive. And then Part she's gotta make and, like you, you don't really know what it's gonna do or what's going on, and I feel like she doesn't either. But she just wants to she you know after she you know heard dennis quaid in the bathroom talk about how she's washed up and this that and the other and she's fearing for God, her career so gut-wrenching and dealing with her mortality and fading into irrelevance it's like it's it's like here is the substance what's in it uh no you just gotta do it you just gotta do it and it's like okay uh i'm gonna do it i don't know what it is but i so desperately want to be back in the limelight i want to be you know sparkles from 30 years ago mm-hmm. and i want to be young with a tight body and a full head of hair and no wrinkles and <laughs> so it plays into a lot of like societal standards and issues with how uh women are treated in the hollywood system and you know especially back then more so than today how you know the uh, the process was of like you're chewed up, you're spit out once you're at a certain yeah. age and you just get replaced with a younger, prettier, more attractive, more attractive version of you. Something. Yeah. And uh, the men that run the companies don't give a shit. They just want to keep turning the wheel and keep making the money. And that's another reason. Another thing I really liked about Dennis Quaid's character is that sometimes he would just have a fleet of like board men. members yep. following him like fucking bugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His like, shoes. Did you, guys, did you guys notice that every time he walked, how loud his shoes were? Yes, yeah. the intentional, the intentionality of just like those little things, the shiny. There's so many references in this movie too to the yeah. shiny. I spotted some psycho. Ones. Yeah, um, but to your point, like his character, Dennis Quaid, does Harvey. such a phenomenal job, Harvey, mm-hmm. as portraying like toxic masculinity in the world that we know it. Because I mean, there are scenes like you mentioned it before, the fucking. The eating scene, like what, like the movie, it's, like, obno- it's, it's obnoxious, it's so fucking yeah. disgusting. Like you want to look away. It's like a fucking car accident. You want to look away, but you can't. And that's it's one like, of the grossest parts of this movie. And this movie, it's goes, the sound. Yeah. yeah, dude, he is just. It's the licking of the fingers oh. and like the yeah. breaking of the shells. And like if you've ever eaten a shrimp and peeled the shell off, and you, or at least you thought you did, yeah. and you bit, <laughs> if you've bitten into like a, a shrimp shell, 
on like a peel and eat shrimp before mm -hmm. you can feel it. Yeah. The thing about this movie is it, I had a lot of phantom sensations, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is insane, which is yeah. From I could, I could taste the shell or I could take, I could feel the texture of biting into a shell of a boiled shrimp in my mouth when he was mm. doing that. And it just fucking irked me. <laughs> That's not the only time I got something like that, but we'll get yeah. into that later. But like just that choice of like that, everything is up close. Like, I just think that it's so insane that the, like from a cinematography perspective, like director of photography and all this, like the up closeness of shots is really what like does it for me because like, I don't think it would be as effective when it's away. Like we're seeing it from Demi Moore's side, like very you know, back, far back. But like when it's really like POV in his face, you're at the table. It's just so unnerving because like your gut reaction is who the fuck eats like that? No, exactly. Like why? Like what arrogance? What's like what narcissism is it to just be like you are? And he's loud. He's talking. He's doing all this shit he's, he's obnoxious sucking his fingers and it's just yeah. like she would never be able to do that and i think it's just a, such a great way of being able to show the double standards in society because like he is doing this and no one is saying anything to him right no, he's he surrounded is, by he's, a bunch of yes men he even gets up and goes and talks to another guy while covered in fucking shrimp goo yeah. as he's like letting go his star her. like she's for, like the last however many she years doesn't fucking matter I'm, yeah. I need someone younger. I need someone hotter. Please get this fucking garbage away from me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all your years of service. Here's a fucking here's a here's fucking a basket. Yeah, in a cookbook. Yeah, the fucking cookbook. Yeah, here's uh, what you could do with the real life now that you're Pat, not on TV, which is so like dismissive and disrespectful. Yeah. So, what was one of your favorite scenes? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I it's mean, okay. if we're going all spoilers, we're all spoilers, baby. It's good. It's, it's at the end. The Guar, the Guar concert? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, rock and roll, heavy metal, all of in put in one. I, I mean, look. That and this... The scene where she... It's later on in the movie where she like took like three months out of mm -hmm. like going back to the body, her, or Demi Moore's body. Yeah, because real quick, hold your thought. Yeah. The rule is, everyone, that you are one, and you are supposed to remember that. The, you have seven days on uh, with your new self, and then you have seven days with your old self. So we say you have to find you. There is a balance that should be um, obeyed and respected, and it's not. And the, that's what I love about this movie. But continue your thought, and I'll bring my thought back in. But yeah, we it, we cut to like three months later, and she has to go back into her original body, mm -hmm. and you don't see it at first. You just hear her scream, and it's. It, that's what builds on to like what the fuck she gonna because before that we just see like her finger go like her all fingers fucked up. Fuck, and all fucked up and in her leg and then you know three months without going back to the original body and she all you hear is like a scream from the bathroom and you're just like mm -hmm. fuck this is gonna be yeah. bad and then and it reveals itself and you're like fuck <laughs> how is this the same person <laughs> yeah and that's the that's thing the that, that's the thing she's like i want to go back and it's like you can't undo anything that's been done and i just yeah, sat there i was guy. like bitch just fucking kill yourself. Why? What, what are you <laughs> doing? Well, the thing is, the thing I was going to talk about is that there's that consistent, like, you know, in the beginning, Sue, who is Margaret Qualley, who is the better version of Elizabeth Sparkle, they are one. And it, when, the first time that it happens with the finger where Sue oversteps the seven day period, when Elizabeth Sparkle comes back, her finger is all shriveled. Yeah. And she immediately calls the number on the phone and is like, what the fuck is happening? How can I reverse this? And he's like, you can't. You are one. That's the rule. And that is something that I love about this movie because everything that is happening to Elizabeth is being done, yes, by Sue, but that is Elizabeth. She is yeah. doing it to herself. Now, I do have a question about the rules of this, this, mm -hmm. this, this world, I guess. I have process. a lot of questions. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, I will try my one... best to answer all of them. I promise. <laughs> so if Sue oversteps the week mm -hmm. and the body, it takes away from uh, Elizabeth's body, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if Elizabeth overstays her week? That body would probably just deteriorate and die, right? Like it, right. the same thing would probably happen to, to Sue. 
Okay. Which we do see later on in the movie. Right. But it's like, it, and it again, it never, because I asked that question is because, again, Elizabeth is so, like, I have to respect the rules, but also to, she's enjoying, it's not, it's, she enjoys being Sue. So exactly. automatically when the time's it's, up, she's like, let me get back. Especially to the fact that Sue doesn't respect the rules. Like she's getting, well, they don't, that's, and, that's the golden thing. Yeah. Neither of them who are one, they're the same person. Yeah. They just have different names because they have to, um, they don't respect the rules no. because everything that's happening, every time Sue makes that decision to stay longer in the body and not respect the seven day in and out system, it's Elizabeth doing it to herself because yeah, exactly. she loves this new her. Yeah. Um. So it, it's a it's a give and take situation. But it's but a split to answer your question, I think what would too. happen yeah. is that if Elizabeth was to not go back, all that would happen is that perfect body would be just like would same thing would happen to her. A finger would shrivel, or her right. she would turn into an old, for lack of a better term, everyone hag because that's kind of what they play it on. Like she becomes mm-hmm. this old shriveled blobby like witch looking almost character yeah after that three month period now if you if you're an anime fan and you've seen a movie called perfect blue <laughs> this is this is very much in the theme and takes a lot of yep. even a lot of inspiration from that movie i would agree so a lot of yeah i feel like a lot of movies do in one way or the other i mean yeah perfect blue it's such good. a fucking good movie yes yeah. but can we just talk about when sue okay let's talk about so a lot like a lot happens in this movie and I but I want to stick to the highlights. Um I think like once Elizabeth get actually calls goes in her fucking bomb ass yellow fucking trench gets 305. Is it 503 or 305? 305. I think it's 503. Okay. Um gets her fucking her her product at, at the the funniest fucking area ever because the door doesn't open halfway so she has to crawl under it. Um the initial transformation was so fucking insane (laughs) the amount of nudity in this movie is insane you get full frontal on everyone um which i think also was a makeup thing too i don't think those were the real i don't think bodies yeah Yeah. i think it was everything was probably made up and done to a way to make it look certain ways and play to the story that's trying to be told oh yeah because the movie is very much like hyper realistic yeah uh i mean come on the perfect yeah. body like doesn't actually exist it's not no. a real thing no but that fucking dude when she takes the substance the activator holy shit dude when she just splits open like first off that eye yeah. scene the close-up to the eye and you're starting to that see all the so fucking, fucking sick oh, you talk about fast acting yeah. yeah i mean a damn tums don't work as fast as the <laughs> substance <laughs> What what they got in that some bitch Red Bull? I'm yeah. telling you, it's like she injected herself. She didn't even make it out the bathroom. It just started fucking going down. Yeah, but it, that was such a cool, especially again. I, I will have to put the eyeball scene too as one of my favorites. Uh, it just really sequences. shows you what the fuck's about to go down. Yeah, like, like seriously. Yeah. Oh, literally, she is going to rip open in her fucking spine. Yeah, it zooms and it. Birth a new person. It zooms <laughs> in on her eye doing the split thing, and it just turns for a second. She was a fucking glow in the dark tool poster. <laughs> yeah. <It was> fucking <laughs> two pupils in the one eye. I was like, fuck yeah, yeah. Jesus, dude, that fucking. And then like she fucking. It's all gross and gooey and bloody, and I love it. And she Margaret Qualley comes out of her, and then she has to sew her up. Which I hate. God, I fucking hated it. Yeah, that was. I fucking hated it. Like I loved, I loved the whole transformation coming out of the back thing. It was very werewolf. Mm -hmm, Like so, like I was like, oh, this is really cool. I don't know how Demi Moore lives by by someone crawling out of your back because that's the 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 fluid that they're giving them is the way they stay alive. But like the spinal cord, how does it handle that? How does the scale? Yes, how I does the skeleton yes, brain there. handle? <laughs> like if what? somebody's crawling out of your back, your fucking bones are fucking getting I would rearranged. Say, what I would say is this: once she's done sewing her back up, the fluid that they give that they're eating or whatever they're what's doing is some sort of like Wolverine fucking regenerative uh, factor. It's like something that truly goes in and restores everything. So that the, the original, because the original self has to survive. That's like yeah. key to this whole thing. Um, so that is what I, I think the the food thing, whatever they're like the that they give them is 
of restorative restorative type of uh, formula. Like, yeah, they don't the explain they don't explain it, so it's like it, it, I mean, I guess we'll never know. Not that yeah. we have to know. Yeah, because the movie, uh, like 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 Pat said, is very hyper realistic. Mm-hmm. It's the like only a, thing it's I like, couldn't fucking believe is her finding an empty spot in her bathroom and <laughs> remodeling her whole house to oh, yeah. have an that empty room. That was insane. <laughs> that was a wild. That was a wild. Like, that's uh, wild pick. Yeah, because how do you know? How I mean, do you know how to do that? Maybe she designed the penthouse. You know maybe. what I mean? Like maybe she remodeled it so she knew from the blueprint previously. But no, because then know. she was knocking on every all the. Like oh, walls. you want to know what? Remember, like they're, they're more intelligent, so everything Hello. about them is they are a better superior. version. So, like they hey, would be able true. to know, like, hey, this is a hollow wall behind here. This is what I need to use. You know what, Mike? And you just get, you know what you get for that? What? <laughs> you get an air horn. I appreciate Whoa, it, what a prestigious <laughs> honor! I know, uh, but I think like I, I like the movie. This is a major things. award. <laughs> I know. I'm fucking. It's like a. It's like a Paul Hollywood handshake on fucking. Great <laughs> oh my god, dude! What I'd give. <laughs> what I'd give to get a handshake from the Arctic Wolf himself. God but, damn, the eyes of a husky. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but I think that, I think that's how you that's how you explain a lot of the wild things that happen. Like when Sue's yeah. around, is because this is literally like the. Pete 10 10 stats on everything. This is this is a hundred and this is a 250 hour plus Skyrim. Everything is a hundred maxed. <laughs> you have done everything. Sneak to the core. Like, so I just think like it's not like so so far stretched to be like, oh, like this is a way smarter version of herself. So she would know that a hollow wall means that there is a cavity back there that she can manipulate. And yeah. Use. Plus, I I yeah. think that also played out more into the metaphors of the movie mm-hmm. like she locks away that fucking she's that locking away her, her other self her, her other yeah yeah exactly and which is and i like mike's comparison because it's definitely like okay i've played skyrim let me play skyrim with mods exactly <laughs> dude that's what it is um i think for me yes my favorite scene is the ending scene because yeah. it's just fucking insane and i literally <laughs> looked to the, the to the person to the left of me in the theater i was like what the fuck is happening? And they were just like, I have no idea. <laughs> and I was like, it was, it was like, we were both just, we were shocked by like, we were seeing such glorified carnage that you haven't seen since fucking Evil Dead 2013. And I still think there was more blood in this, in that one scene than in the entirety of that movie. Dude, that's where all the, that's where all the fucking uh, red corn syrup budget went. <laughs> For yeah. real. Because it um, was everywhere and it was just so fucking. <laughs> absolutely off the wall and i remember looking at my girlfriend because at this point we were fucking done we were so done by like we had tw- i remember looking at the at the fucking thing and being like oh my god i'm so fucking exhausted and i go to look at the time i'd have like an hour left and i'm like oh my an hour are you fucking serious like a 5k run and then fucking <laughs> no all of a sudden all of a sudden the ending's happening and i just look at my girlfriend and i go why not <laughs> why yeah. why not why not let this happen why not this be what happens fucking oh, this man. whole movie has been off the rails since think... the yoke split from the uh, game two yokes <laughs> and me I'm sorry, but for me, it's that scene, but also the cooking scene. That shit was so fucking disgusting. funny. It was disgusting. She is sitting there. He's like, we've never. Um, I said that wrong. I was about to say that we never seen them act like live, but it's so interesting that um, we never see Sue watching Elizabeth's life because we watch Elizabeth watch Sue. Yeah, and I don't well, know if it's I could the only thing I couldn't figure out and I was trying to figure out is was she just watching reruns of things that were happening while Sue was in the closet or was Elizabeth alive? That's was the part I think I think I'm let me just rethink this real quick. Yeah. No, because they locked themselves up. They locked them in that portal. Therefore, they have the fluid attached to them. So yes. But that's the what, thing is that they're one. So does that mean that when she knocks one out and the other one becomes aware that the other one- it's the same person so demi moore would be looking through the eyes of sue or no in a sense yeah but i mean like so what i was trying to understand is i think i just solved it i just answered it in my head is that during that entire cooking scene i i when i first watched this movie i thought that she like elizabeth had like got out of the the cavity hole and was watching all the shit sue was doing while she was active 
but that's not the case. I did, like after a second time I watched it, I was like, oh no no no, Sue is in the cavity hooked up to the fluid to stay pristine, while Elizabeth is watching all of the past week roll cap that she was on. Right, she was so like for the last seven days that she wasn't included. Yeah, she was catching up because the weird thing is they don't remember. Like, I that's what that blows me away because they are one. You think that they will remember these experience, but that cooking scene where she goes through the entire French cookbook was the funniest yet just most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Because like she, the Demi Moore in that in that sequence of events is unlike Demi Moore I've ever seen. Right. right. No. And exactly. The- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now why like, did she like I, I don't understand to why she did that. Why, why she, she just started cooking everything. I guess she, she's fucking hungry. Cause then cause then fucking Sue would come out and there would just be like fucking like Control chicken carcasses. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's you. Yeah, it's, it's her. You. <laughs> but it's just like she's freaking out and just cooking all this food, and I'm like, I don't know what this is supposed to mean. <laughs> it's a, it's I, in my well, opinion, I think she's indulging things. into the creature that she is make turn herself into. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That and I think another thing, three things. What Pat just said. Two, I would assume that 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 like Dylan, if anyone can speak to it, it'd be you. Like. Yeah, when you're hooked up to an IV f- line and you're that's oh my God. feeding you, once you're able to finally eat, you're ravenous. Dude. So I think that's another factor is that she is just, after seven days of not actually eating food, being hooked up to a bag of fluids, she is so fucking hungry that she's eating anything and everything and living like a pig because three, she doesn't care about that body anymore, truly. Yeah. Even though she does to a degree show it, she doesn't because right. she knows the next the hottest best thing is in the cavity. But she's what she's mad about. It's a lot of self hate. This movie is is a deep dive exploration of se- your inner self hate, and that and that is purely shown when Jimmy Moore calls that guy for a date. That. Does the whole does her makeup changes her outfits. And I'm assuming that ever you know, we us as guys will never ever be able to truly speak to this. So anyone who's listening that is of the women variety who would love to share their open their own thoughts about this, we would welcome it. Please email us, drop us a comment on the on the Spotify, DM us, however you want to do it, and we will post it somewhere. But the she looked amazing, but when she looked at the mirror, she saw all her flaws, and. Redid her makeup and redid this, yeah. this and do this and do this and do this, and but so much more on on women. It's more so on women. Women. You telling me Demi Moore, with, has, Demi Moore with a fucked up leg and a fucked up finger still can't get it? Please. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just like, <laughs> I, could, I will still. It, it's just it's all that where like yeah. women are told they have to be beautiful, they have to be the side, they have to be the standard, they have to do this, they have to look this, they have to dress this way, and she's been told that at fifty. She's been dismissed because she is no longer worth it, attainable, hot, attractive. But yes, she is. Well, she doesn't see that because she's lived the whole life of being told otherwise. And yeah. she does the whole makeup smear and just completely breaks down. That and, that right there oh, should give her some fucking Oscar. That right there should give anything. her the fucking Oscar award. Yeah. That scene was so fucking tragic. And well, was hard, so hard to watch, even as a guy, just watching that and being like, yeah. this is fucked. Like, no one should have to feel that way. Because like, no. she looked amazing. And, like, she, that, then that guy's like texting her and she's in the bed wallowing in yeah. her, in, in herself. And it's just such a, that is why I love this movie because of things like that. Because, yes, you get the disgusting body horror elements and all this, but then you strip all of that away and it's this crazy film. That is attacking everything that society has done to make women feel like they aren't worth anything because well, they don't have when it a comes, ten out of ten body. When it comes to the entertainment that these these two produce too, mm-hmm. and you compare the the fitness, uh, the aerobatics shit they're doing, right, and the difference of like her version of that because of her times, and then mm-hmm. the Sue's version is just like very hypersexual, very hyper like almost porn like. <laughs> Yeah, she's like everyone like the fucking camera lens, the camera when they, when Sue finally comes alive and they finally start filming, um, that camera shining on her, kind of just fixating on her was yeah. just, there's so many like well done little 
chef well, kisses I, in this movie. I, I fucking love towards the when we get more involved into the movie that like Sue's sequences, even outside of her filming her show, still feels and looks like a commercial. Yeah. yeah. Like her just it's drinking definitely, soda. It's brighter. It feels like the film grade, the color grading changes. Yeah. When when Elizabeth is on screen, it feels a little bit darker. But when Sue's on camera, when on brighter. screen, it's it's brighter. It's 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 more energetic. Imagine, okay, imagine all of that. Then out of your penthouse, you had your billboard. Yeah. Right. And they take it down, and you have to watch this new hotter self be like it's it's almost it's so insane that like. She does this of her own will to change herself because she's she wants to be better. But then all of this self regret and self hatred of seeing what she's done unfold in the world, yeah, um, it really in- affect her, um, both physically and mentally, right? Like, I mean, like she yeah. is not the same person from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. Like, she is completely different. Um, the boyfriend. So when uh, this the okay, dude. First off, the outfits in this movie are fucking god. They're so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Great, amazing. There's the, the every every element of this movie is phenomenal. Um, when Sue brings home the biker and she's got like the zip the pool zip up suit on, phenomenal. I was like holy shit, what a fucking awesome outfit. Um, I love the yellow the yellow coat. I love how like Demi Moore continuously wears that in like fucking like summer of hollywood like what the fuck <laughs> like, it's got to be representative of something because it's just such, it's just such a bright statement piece yeah. that like the the yellow coat's gotta with a movie like this loaded with you know allegories and fucking like metaphors and shit like that you would think that something sure like that does. would would mean something yeah they just had a substance party at a hotel here in brooklyn yeah oh really night. yeah i was gonna go to it but I did because yeah. it was like it was like it was like super late when it started. I was like, I'm an old boy. I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah, New York City is for the youngsters, um, <laughs> right? Um, trying to think, like we see a lot. Okay, so I, I kind of want to talk about towards the end where it's been <laughs> what three months, yeah, and Sue has been purgent, has been just sucking the spinal fluid out of their thing because that's another thing, like. To get their what is it called? Um, the little vials that they shoot up to like fix them. stabilize themselves. The stabilizers, yeah, is fucking spinal fluid. Yeah, um, which which was, is that, also that <laughs> that fucking I wanted to throw up. And <laughs> that the see the and like that's where you could tell that like not just like Demi Moore has like like disdain for Sue, but Sue has disdain for Demi Moore Mm -hmm. because you can tell every time she drives that needle into her spine and that wound, it's just, it gets more aggressive and more hatred filled and And it just gets more visceral. And like the, the, the wound gets all pussy and infected and gross. And it just keeps going in there. And that was just one more day. That was one more day. That was the scene I alluded to earlier about having phantom sensations because uh, lumbar yeah. punctures for yourself well it, it, no it's just it, like i i don't know if i want to use the word triggering but like it just reminded me of going through my mm-hmm. uh going through my treatments for my cancer because i had to get my spinal fluid tested to see mm-hmm. if my cancer spread from my brain to my spinal fluid uh so they oh, had to give true. me they had to give me a spinal tap and my mom had a spinal tap when she was in middle school because she had spinal meningitis and it almost killed her God damn. Yeah. So like I had to get that. And like, I remember that it didn't hurt and it only took 10 minutes, but I just remember this weird feeling of just force and pressure on my Mm -hmm. lower back. And when she would do that stuff in the movie by forcing that needle into her back, it just would make my back feel so feel fucking weird. <laughs> now I fucking feel bad. Yeah. Like it, did, that's what exhausted me. Like, cause yeah. she would do it over and over and I would just be like squirming in my seat. Ugh. Like, Oh God. Like We're sorry, it's like, guys. I feel, I feel the sensation in my lower back mm. and it no. was just like, and uh, yeah, it just was, uh, which well, I mean, you know what you get to do, one? to do that <laughs> for a movie to do that. It's, it's 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 they've done a good job to elicit yeah. that kind of thing a reaction yeah. but it was very like it was just so uncomfortable so did, and she did so it Dylan. a lot so Dylan, because <laughs> you, did, you made the court. sacrifice to watch this movie because we made you you get it you get an air horn <laughs> look at that oh geez it, it's all worth it <laughs> we, we, we salute you for your service 
Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I, 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 even for me, I was like, God damn, yeah. you got to stop. Can you go to a different spot? Did they, do the rules explicitly say that you have to pull from lumbar five for the love of God? Well, do go you have to, lower, do you go upward, to, something, please. Do you have yeah, no, it was, it was like exactly where they did it on me. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I just remember like feeling that. First of all, I remember uh, they turned on the radio and Sublime was playing while they gave me the God. fucking spinal tap. <laughs> no. So I was like, I just hear like, I just hear the worst guitar solo of all time. <laughs> Cause it's like, how dare you say you play a guitar like a motherfucking riot and then proceed to do. in the comments like, bro, fucking you talk about Sublime, blah, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, no. So it just, I was just like, I just remember being like, oh God, I was like squirting <laughs> in my seat because my lower back just got hot. Oh. <laughs> like, but listen, she drains Don't get Elizabeth on his back a fucking spinal fluid that Sorry, she does bro. this so much. Yeah. Drains her that Sue starts fiending and does something that is a big no no. She takes someone else's sub activator substance and injects herself with it. And mm, she tried to make a better version of a better version. And she, this is where the movie really surprised me because I was not expecting that we would get a final act with a title card monstro Elisa, Elisa Sue. So sick. But before it, that, oh, yes. Before that, <laughs> before that, what also got to me was the teeth pull and nail pulling. And when oh my god! Pulled. Oh yes, fuck. That's what I meant. To, oh yeah. fuck. Yes. Sorry. That long ass tooth. We, we also got to oh. remember Sue kills uh, Elizabeth. Pretty much with that final draw, she yeah. kills her. Oh no, yeah. they fight. They beat they the fight. shit out yeah, of each no, other. I forgot her. about that. Yeah, god yeah. damn. Yeah. That was rough. And then she goes to the uh, New Year's. The New uh, Year's celebration, celebration. New Year's Eve celebration. And like right before she goes on stage, like her teeth start falling out. Which her, are horrible scenes. Yeah. She goes to the bathroom, the infamous bathroom, okay. where fucking uh, we see Dennis Quaid fucking destroy any self-respect that fucking uh, Elizabeth had and proceeds to fucking pull her teeth out. Yeah, fall out. I shouldn't the say nails pull out. They and the out. ear. Yeah, oh. and then she goes home and well, the, has hold on. a little. There's a scene that's the best that is important to talk about. What? She fucking goes to leave, and she's met with by Henry and his oh, goon yeah. squad, and he's like, "Is everything okay?" And she's like, "Mm-hmm." Then he's <laughs> like, "Then smile," <laughs> and she tries to smile without showing her teeth because she like has none. And then Pat, she goes home. Then she goes home, and then she uh, she has a little bit of the substance left from the first injection, I think. Mm -hmm. And she thinks, like, well, I'm falling apart, but this is supposed to make a better version of my uh, the, the better version. <laughs> and that goes as backwards as you think. <laughs> it really fucking does. It's like she fucking Uno reverse fucking Which draw we 20. we all knew before even that even happened. We are like, baby girl, I don't think this is how this works. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, no. Put that vial down. This isn't how it works. You're but <laughs> we were not expecting what we got, which was no. uh, what I can only explain of her and Demi Moore, if they were in a blender, <laughs> yep. mixed together and then cooked, baked, <laughs> and, and and served with a la mode with yeah. vanilla ice cream on the side. Absolutely. And then get, you rub down some icing on top. Like, <laughs> it's it becomes a monster of its own of its own kind to where limbs and arms and titties are all over the place yeah oh my god the, the okay the practical effects in this fucking movie are phenomenal hands down everything in this movie is just beautiful and these this monster fucking creation was just so bizarre the little titty that's just like popping out the fucking <laughs> face on the back what the fuck <laughs> dude everything about this was so fucking cool and I've seen so many people for Halloween dress up as Monstro Eliza Sue. Yeah. And I'm just, I applaud the effort. I applaud the fucking, the dedication. And I'm just so happy that so many people in the, the non-horror echo environment went and saw this and was like, this is the most batshit thing I've watched. I need to dress up as her as Halloween. Yeah. 
She fucking is a giant monster, has to sneak her way in. But before that, there is this giant painting of Elizabeth Sparkle in the house. And she goes in and cuts out the face and staples it to herself and pokes high. So it's almost like a paper bag type of pool. Yeah, she pulled a joker. She pulled a joker. And <laughs> she puts on earrings she, on things that think are ears. <laughs> that I think are ears. Or how did the dress even fit? I don't Because at know. that point, she's just trying to convince herself, like, I'm beautiful still. I, she is the, be- the most beautiful girl at the party. And, you know, the most that, beautiful even as Monstro girl in the, the world. And I think for, you know, practical effect makeup guys and uh, people that love horror movies, people that love body horror. In a sense, this was a beautiful creature. <laughs> yes, this was a beautiful creature. A hundred percent. This is a master class on yeah. how to bring a monster to life. And I just love that people would like, she would interact with people and they'd be like, you're wanted in five minutes. Like, where have you been? Like, they, yeah. they don't see this fucking it horrendous remi- blob. That's, that they are fully fucking um, <laughs> beguiled by the fucking paper mask that she's fucking They're like. like oh, it, it, it reminds me of South Park when... Uh, everybody thinks that uh, this goat is Stevie Nicks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, it reminds me of that where it's like, oh, Miss Nicks, right this way. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, uh, Cartman's hand as Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, yes. yeah, Miss <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, Lopez. <laughs> like, it reminded me of that so so oh, much. Man. But then she gets on stage, and she is spotlight, just fucking rocking on her, and for a brief moment. She is in a grand, she is having grand illusions. She yeah. thinks she's beautiful. Everyone's, no one's going to notice. She's like heavy breathing. Like she just ate fucking 12 crystal burgers like Dylan did over the weekend. White Castle, like, thank you very <laughs> much. White Castle, excuse me. I'm a company man. And then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, to our surprise, the thing falls off. And everyone, the veil has been lifted off the crowd, and the mob mentality that inside in riots is some of the most badass twenty minutes of cinematic history. I was not expecting. Absolutely, they those audience members, they said fuck around and find out. They <laughs> went fucking ham so much so that they cut off a fucking arm of hers and she is just spraying blood everywhere it, it is just blood fest extravaganza fucking uterus magris this came out of uh crawled out of hell to refront man guar and they're playing fucking fucking an animal off of animal party and it is just blood guts terror people screaming kill it it's a monster <laughs> and it's just a fun time. I was dying laughing watching the last twenty minutes of this movie. It was a bit. It was. It was a bit much for sure, uh, in a good way. Uh, it's really um, everybody in the room. Uh, once the once the paper mask falls off, it is uh, a good chance for everyone in there to kind of get a glimpse of what everybody in there has collectively created. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know Dennis Quaid's in there, and you know his name's Harvey. Obviously, he's meant to be fucking Harvey Weinstein. Yes, I, um, I said Henry earlier. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Harvey. It's Harvey. Yeah, yeah. And everybody, and they hate what they see. You know, oh, they Someone hate ugly. Hates her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, off. yeah, it kind of gives me, in a way, it kind of gives me like a surreal vibe from like Mother, mm-hmm. which yeah. I've fucking hate that movie <laughs> yeah i made the funniest mother video on tiktok oh you, you know, did the, yeah you know the scene where they uh, spoiler alert where the baby gets fucking crowd surfed yeah i i did i <laughs> there i'll send it to you guys if you've never watched it but it's that scene with cannibal corpse playing in the background <laughs> that's sick no i um uh, no i that was one of the that was one of the worst movie theater experiences i ever had was watching whether that movie sucked um but <laughs> i did have fun with the ridiculousness of it all at a point to where like i've just been through so many physical and mental up and downs with this movie at that point it's just like you just got to stand up and slowly clap your hands yeah yeah because it's just like it feels like when an enemy has bested you in combat or like (laughs) or it's like you just can't help but respect the torture they put you through because it was just you know like at that point i was like well at least they're having fun 
Yeah. What it sounds like, everyone, is Dylan experienced Stockholm Syndrome and began to, <laughs> began to thank his captor for his, for their time. No, I didn't. I respected it. I didn't thank him for it. I didn't. I wasn't. Trust <laughs> yeah. me, if I was allowed to stop watching that movie at any point in time, which I mean, I, I'm sure that if I just couldn't handle it, y'all we would have been y'all fine. Would, oh, of course. Yes. Y'all we would be fine you, with it. But, but I was like, I ain't no whip. <laughs> and, yeah. and I have to sit. I have to sit there and recreate my fucking worst nightmare of watching people thread needles into veins yeah i have like i have to go get blood work done and that like that that keeps me up at night the thought of like because i i overthink the process of inserting a needle into a vein and like i look at it on such a microscopic level i just think about this needle threading into someone's vein and it's all bloody and veiny Mm. And it just you're gonna gets, hate a scene of Heretic, but you still have to watch it. Well, I'll just it's close. Very uh, minimal. It's very fast. I'll clo- I close my eyes when someone shaves, so I'm not gonna <laughs> fucking. I'll I'll close my eyes no, when just, I see I'm a needle coming. I'm just giving you a warning. And I there's appreciate. There's gonna be a scene in Heretic that you're. It's gonna make you squirm, but it's over real fast. Yeah, it was that scene that I just fucking. Yeah, yeah. all the IV scenes and fucking giving the shots and just threading yeah. needles. Oh god, because it had. Because again. It happened to me so much going through radiation and Whatever chemo and stuff. Like it Dylan just has like PTSD. Everyone from his experience, it, and that's it, not a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> it, is, I'm it is not, like, this is a, not joke. a joke. This is for real. Yeah, and I just I, I think uh, well, a lot of the times, like me and Pat always try to make you watch fucked up gross movies, and I would have we would have 100 percent stood behind you not watching this movie well here's the thing i too. just wanted you to experience and i that's why i gave you some warnings i'm like dude it is fucked up so be prepared like it's insane i'm not i'm not fucking blowing smoke up your up ass is this is up. a fucked well, up well, movie well because here's here's the thing i've come to realize that i don't I, I used to be able to have a higher tolerance for that i used to have a higher tolerance for a lot of things yeah but with that whole situation um God, I just I just had the perfect way to explain it, and I think I just lost it. Oh no! Oh, but yeah, no. no. But it's just like, oh, I figured it out. So basically, that whole from like October twenty nineteen mm-hmm. to about October. I mean, till about no, from like October twenty twenty to about May two thousand twenty one. I lived my own body horror movie. Oh, 100%. Like, you know, like I vomited at one point. I shit on my own bathroom floor. I fucking, I got, I got a fucking thing put into my chest and threaded through my jugular vein so I could get medicine. I've gotten IVs inserted into me. I've been inside so many different radiation and x ray machines. Like, uh, and like, I've been given so many injections and like just so much stuff. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's just like, it's exhausting for me physically because I've experienced so many different physical sensations that it's linked to me mentally. Yeah. yeah. No, so watching course. something like this was very exhausting yes. for me, not because yeah. it was bad, but just because no. of the content itself. Yeah. No, but right. I wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have came to this realization as to why body horror is so effective triggering for me Mm -hmm. is because of this movie Mm -hmm. is because it was done in such a fucking hardcore way it almost couldn't help me and talking about it right now also kind of helps me realize oh this is why why. you know mike you've got you know your medical background so you're able to like in the ways legitimately back me up when i'm saying these things um so yeah like now i know a little bit more about myself <laughs> <laughs> Listen, say what we you say the substance is out here awakening people and having them work on themselves and acknowledge yeah them. what a great movie Did yeah movie no. to make you really for a movie to make you introspective yourself like this what a badass film if anybody else feels like that we fucking yeah. and you want to talk up. about it hit up just yeah. fucking tag me somehow in a dm yeah, tag and just Dylan talk to me about it talk to him about it Fucking, yeah. I'm always down for uh, commiserating and miserable experiences. <laughs> With um, all that being said, yeah, this was, in my opinion, a master class in filmmaking, a master class in body horror. And because typically sometimes body horror movies are really shit on the script and the acting is not so good. Yeah. This movie, in my opinion, just really hit every fucking box that I look for when I'm watching something. And I'm just I'm still excited about talking to talk about it. I'm still excited to share it with people with, you know, knowing like, hey, guys, watch it. But at your own discretion, it is a hard watch. It is you know a difficult movie. It's gross. It's and it's not gross because it's overtly like blood and gore. It's gross because like 
they use things and do things in a way that are not normal and disturbing and make you fucking like freak out. Um, my score for this movie, I originally gave it a four and a half. And then I kind of, I rewatched it and I sat with it and I rethought about it and I came to a conclusion that it's a five. So that's why it's hard for me because I gave long legs a five. So these are two movies for me right now that are stacked in the one to two. And I don't know if it's going to be like a, I, I'm in a crime theme drama right now, so I'm going to put Long Legs at one, or I'm going to throw the substance. But then we have Nosferatu coming out, and that's going to fuck up the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but my, oh, I yeah. love this movie. I hope that they do a fucking a collector's edition release of this where you get some cool stuff attached to it. Um, if you're a fan of body horror and you have not watched this, you need to stop sleeping on it and watch this movie. But just, again, <laughs> warning to everything from Dylan's perspective, like those things are real and they will fuck with you. Uh, but this is just a phenomenal movie, and I truly do hope that it goes to a gold. The uh, it it wins a Golden Globe. I hope it goes to the Oscars. I want to see Caroline Forgeet um, just win the world because this is truly just a masterclass in filmmaking. That is my last bit on this movie. I'm um, I'm gonna give it a four and a half, just like you had checked a lot of boxes, especially for this year. And you know we we started this podcast with the phrase of bringing uh, bringing back monsters exactly, and this year has been a the best form of that since it's like a lot of this movie these movies that we've been getting are a lot of practical effects. Oh, yeah, a lot of monsters, too. a lot of monsters, a lot of creatures, <laughs> and especially something like this is getting you know almost mainstream uh, look at you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are talking about this movie. This movie made some a lot of money through word God, of there's mouth. There's a fucking party in Brooklyn about this movie. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? That's never happened. No. Terrifier 3 rang, closed out the fucking NASDAQ yeah. a couple weeks ago. Like, horror is a, a top tier this year. Especially, right. and, it, and I'm glad it's good horror movies. Same. It's coming from, like, independent studios and independent uh, franchises and stuff like that, so... And it's and just going to propel the genre even further, which is good, good business for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, we're we. It's a time to be alive everybody wins. The horror podcast studios yeah. can make lower budget movies and and get amazing profits in return. Yep. Yeah. And that good. just and that and that and you know it's it's been proven that horror can help build an entire production company. Yep. Look at New Line Cinema. That's New the line. house that Freddie <laughs> built. Yeah. New Line, yeah. Lionsgate. Yeah. You know all it's God, just a twenty four. Yeah, A24. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, yeah, it has other genres that it releases, but it's but primarily it's put out horror. some of the bangers that yeah. are horror and has helped just build that name for that comp- that organization. Yeah. And same with Neon. Neon. Neon is slowly on the rise with its releases. Yeah. So with that, like, I have to 100% support a movie like this. Also, it was just a good movie. Yeah. Not not even on just, like, the subject matter or uh, the visuals, but just, like, on a tactical level. Mm-hmm. This movie was shot really well. has a lot of good references to a lot of good movies and stuff a like that. A lot of good references. And, Del- and all around, I, this, I it, it checked a lot of boxes. I can't really find anything that I didn't like about this movie. Same. Same. So, I, can't, I, I can't tell you one thing I hated about this movie. Yeah. Seriously. And the fact that I'm still, again, we... I've seen it twice, and I'm still talking about it. I'm still excited. Even out, outside this podcast, I'm probably still going to talk about this with Mike and Dylan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're I keep sending gifts because there's, yeah. like, great. There's fucking awesome gifts of this movie. But Dylan, yeah, what, your uh, review. score? Rev- yeah, score? And thoughts? This is the toughest review or score I think I've ever given on the show. Because mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm truly in myself a person like of the substance. I now have two versions of myself. <laughs> There's the version of me that so good at this. <laughs> the, this is the version of me that never will watch this movie again. And I never will. I'll That's never right. watch this movie again. Does it make it a bad movie? No, no, it does not make it a bad movie at all. Um, it's, it's to me, there's another version of me that respects everything about this movie and what it stands for and how it was made and everybody that was in it and the performances they gave. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a movie that is elevating smaller voices. It's elevating a body horror, the genre itself. Like I said, Katy Perry tweeted, it was the best movie of the year. Like it's reaching out to another it's like it's just going out further and further. It's the turnstile of mo- horror movies. 
Well, I mean, I don't know how. <laughs> well, but. turns out fucking the, the, they were small. They're and now they're huge and they're reaching realms that we've never would have seen in yes. the whole world. Yes, because like like you know, body horror, hardcore has been around for a long time, and sometimes it takes a a, a song, like a band in the same genre doing something a little different mm-hmm. and a little bit more elevated. So yeah, because like Turnstile does hardcore. They've been hardcore. They still are hardcore. But they just do something different, and it's like yep. an ease of progressive, like progressiveness from the first album to the next to the next to the next, and they're all enjoyable in their own way. Yep. And body horror is kind of turning into something like that, just because you know, like you said, the director also did Revenge, and then the substance is like the next step forward from from a movie like Revenge, which is a phenomenal movie of itself. Right. So, and you know, um, like I said, I'll never watch this movie again. <laughs> But g- g- I, it's tough. It's tough. Um, um, I mean, let me think about it while I tell y'all a fat story. While uh, after I had my brain <laughs> surgery, because uh, because spinal fluid also was something that m- triggered a memory, but not a bad one, a funny one. Um, basically, after my brain surgery, they stapled up the back of my head. I have like a giant scar. Um, <laughs> my friend Grant wanted to get me out of the house, so we went to this diner in town. And I still had staples in the back of my head. I was walking around like Frankenstein in public. I didn't give a fuck. I was hungry. I was taking steroids. I was taking steroids was after. Villain. I was taking steroids after the surgery. Mm-hmm. So I'm ravenously hungry, dude. <laughs> Fucking my mom's coming in with like McDonald's breakfast, and I'm snatching it out of her hands like. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to this place, and I um I order this bacon egg and cheese sandwich thing, and it was big, right? So I go and I start eating into it. I'm like, God, this is so fucking good. You know, like fucking, I just had brain surgery. I think everything's going to be all right. You know, I'm with my friend. Everything's good. And then I'm like, why is the, why is my back wet? Oh, no, no. (laughs) It was like, I don't understand. I start feeling around and I'm like, what's this clear shit? Why is my back on my neck? Like around my surgery area, like it's all wet. What the fuck? It's not blood. And then I start to think to myself as I take another bite and I'm chewing, I'm like, oh, when you chew, the the back of your head muscles are working too, mm-hmm. where your surgery scar is. So I'm sitting there at this diner leaking spinal fluid <laughs> out of my fucking head surgery that I just got out of like two days, three days prior. And so when I saw all the spinal fluid stuff in the movie, I was like, Dylan, you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> You knew that sandwich was too big and you got spinal fluid all over the Georgie's diner floor. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to clean this up. <laughs> it ain't me. I left. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dylan is the original uh, uh, origin of the substance. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, my rating. Listen, I'm going to be fair. I'm going to give it for what it is. And uh, I got to I got to kind of mix myself and how I feel outside of it together. I'm going to give it a three. I'm gonna That's go down a the middle. Solid score. I'm gonna go down that the is middle. More than I would have expected you to give this movie, and I love that you gave it a three. I think it's fair. I you, think it's fair. You, the listener, you now are required to tell us what you think and feel about the substance starring Demi Moore, Marja Quali, and Dennis Quaid. Uh, no, we would love to hear you guys' thoughts. We've talked to some of you on uh, through DMs and comments, and we love the hell of you guys for interacting with us. Uh, so tell us your thoughts, what you what you think, what you hated, what you would love to see next uh, in the body horror world. Um, but that is going to be it for us. That is the horror junkies and the substance. If you are not following us on TikTok, on Instagram, do that at horror junkies official we're now on blue sky which is the new twitter come hang out it's cool vibes over there a lot of fun i'll drop that uh link in the fucking show notes for us um until next time i'm mike i'm pat and i'm dylan stay weird and take the substance y'all what a badass soundtrack